Good morning, North Texas Conference. This is Matt Jacob, Director of Communications, and I welcome you to uh, a Facebook Live video that we are offering today on best practices and use of uh, streaming and online uh, viewership of our worship services. I, I know that we find ourselves in very unprecedented times today, and it's interesting, uh, but we still must find ways that we can be the church that we need to be for our communities. And uh, I think this is a, an opportunity for us all if we have uh, never if our churches have never considered using online uh, applications such as Facebook or live stream as a way to provide our message out to the masses. And today, uh, just by way of agenda setting, I want us to uh, go over just some technical best practices uh, on the use of uh, live stream, or excuse me, of, of at least Facebook Live as a way of uh, providing your services to uh, your followers. But also I have uh, Jessica Vittorio, one of our uh, delegates to Where's Jessica? Sorry for the rudimentary. Hi, uh, one of our North Texas General Conference uh, delegates with us to discuss the copyright and uh, legal ra ramifications of uh, having an online uh, uh, service posted uh, on your Facebook page. And basically what I'm going to uh, offer today focuses on Facebook Live because I feel like from a from an application and a platform perspective, this is something that is accessible uh, really to the masses. But before we begin, I just want us to uh, kind of go through Psalm 4610 as a, as a breathing exercise. And we're going to start with be still and know that I am God, and walk that back all the way to the end. And I just want you to, to think of ways that we can be still, while at the same time know the situation that we all find ourselves in and find an opportunity uh, to really be there for everyone else. So please, as you are and where you are, please repeat with me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and. Be still. Be. Take a deep breath. And let's start talking about some Facebook Live action. I feel like, like I said previously, Facebook is the platform that even for those churches among us that have never done uh, any online uh, streaming of their services, uh, it would be the, the best and the easiest uh, and the fastest to uh, platform to undertake. And I mean, for starters, uh, my recommendation is that you stream any video uh, on your church's official Facebook page. I feel like that is where uh, the greatest number of followers will come, uh, and rather from the individual pastor uh, pastor's Facebook page. So if you don't already have a Facebook page, uh, for your church, I would recommend uh, starting one up and uh, sending an invitation out to uh, your members to follow uh, as a way to knowing that all of your, if this is something that you want to um, do moving forward, uh, as long as we're uh, having services or not having services, this is a, uh, a good uh, initial step to follow. Uh, Rob Price, thank you. Uh, we're glad to see that you did your first Facebook Live uh, last Sunday and that you had some success with that. And to that end, uh, I just I welcome uh, some questions that you might want to submit uh, via the live chat, and we should be able to answer them as we go. Uh, just ask for your grace and patience as we uh, are a uh, right now at least uh, myself and Jessica. So, um, by way of tips. Uh, 
uh, I think that just uh, from a production perspective, it's good to uh, have a tripod that you can uh, attach your photo, I mean, that you can attach your device to uh, for steadiness. Uh, you can position it in such a way uh, to maximize uh, sound quality as well. Congratulations, Larry. I'm glad First DeSoto did their first Facebook Live last Sunday as well. And like Rob, you had great success too. So uh, if you don't already have one, I would recommend having a, uh, go out and purchase um, a tripod that uh, will uh, balance your device in that way. Um, by way of location, uh, if you are uh, streaming these, uh, obviously streaming uh, your service from uh, your sanctuary, find a place where lighting uh, is adequate as well. You don't wanna get too much uh, light in there and it drowns out uh, the person that you're taping so that people can't see that. Uh, but definitely find uh, a good juxtaposition where you can uh, put, where you can set up your uh, device and and find uh, the best location for you uh, because especially from a lighting perspective, you don't want to uh, have uh, any issues with shadows or bright lights and the, uh, and the like. Uh, sound quality, I think, is also important uh, because it would be great if people were able to uh, see you, but if they can't hear you or there's a lot of distraction in the background, it's going to detract from your message. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much. I'm glad that uh, Facebook Live at uh, Creekwood UMC last week was a, was such a great success. And Patrick, say hi uh, to David and uh, Carrie Lynn for me while you're at it. Um, so make sure that uh, your viewers can understand you uh, and what it's and what it is that you are saying. Sound obviously is uh, a big challenge. There are uh, some devices that you can uh, purchase that will connect to your phone or to your camera uh, equipment that will help to uh, capture the sound in the best way uh, possible. It, they're, they're pretty inexpensive, but they clip in right into uh, the charger portal of your phone and you can direct it in such a way that uh, you can capture that sound in a lot better uh, in a lot better ways. Uh, signal strength is also something that I think that you need to uh, worry about, uh, and not worry about, but at least uh, be cognizant of because you wanna make sure that uh, there is enough uh, Wi-Fi strength uh, where you are setting up your device so that your broadcast doesn't drop off in the middle. And that's something that we all uh, at least my perspective, at least, we don't like to uh, to have that drop off because you're losing followers, you're losing credibility, and people can't uh, get your message in, uh, in its totality. So definitely when you're able, and I know that's uh, an issue uh, or it could be a potential issue uh, in some of our rural areas, but you really want to be able to maximize your um, the, the opportunity to uh, to capture that information in its totality. So uh, be mindful of the streaming, or excuse me, of the signal strength of where you're at. Uh, and also uh, think too about um, uh, the, uh, excuse me, I'm the, I'm, the, whether or not it's a vertical or horizontal nature. I think that uh, to be able to capture the, uh, the positioning, in my perspective at least, running horizontal uh, is perfect, uh, but it depends on, on your location and where it is that you truly are, uh, do, are, you are uh, providing your streaming. So, um, Deanna Lowe, thank you so much. Uh, and this is a good recommendation uh, as or suggestion as well. Um, she ordered a Bluetooth microphone uh, for this Sunday. Uh, and uh, I think that's a, a wonderful option as well. There are a lot of lavalier mics that uh, are Bluetooth that uh, can attach or at least uh, reconcile with your devices. So you'll have those uh, available uh, to use as well. and. 
uh, more than anything, I mean, we talk about, I mean, best practices and functionality. Uh, you need to find a situation that works best for you. And I would definitely, uh, as a wonderful best practice, not only on video, but in so many other respects, try it. Test, test the functionality. Uh, maybe not test it on uh, your church's Facebook page, but test it on your, um, on, uh, your own private pages so that you can make sure that the live aspect of uh, video is working. Uh, we're running off my phone this morning because there was an issue uh, with uh, my laptop and being able to uh, have my camera access blocked. So uh, that's partially for the rudimentary nature of we're running right now, but I'm glad that I at least tested it beforehand and knew that uh, there was a backup option. So uh, I would definitely think that uh, you, and I would recommend that you truly test uh, your functionality uh, before, I mean, before you do anything. Um, because we want our followers we, uh, to be able to, to watch us. We want to be able to be the church. And uh, as we have seen uh, said so much of late, uh, but even through Bishop McKee, uh, church is not just the four walls um, of a building itself. We want to be the church for our people and for our members so that we can uh, provide them some, easy, uh, some easiness and some steadiness uh, in their lives. And if they can't come to us, we uh, as churches want to be able to come to them in whatever capacity uh, that might be. So uh, this is, we, it's like I said earlier, we are in unprecedented times, but that doesn't mean that we as a church can't be the church that our communities need us to be. Um, make sure, too, that when you are... Oh, hello, Bishop. Nice to see you online as well. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, be sure, too, that when you, uh, at the conclusion of your live video, uh, there will be opportunities to, uh, to publish that onto your page. And uh, make sure that you, uh, that you do so, because uh, you want to be able to have others at another time watch, uh, uh, watch your videos. So um, just make sure that at the conclusion of your live video that you publish it to the page and people can go back and watch, uh, watch what it is that you presented earlier. And uh, I think from a metrics perspective, we all like to see uh, the reach and uh, the impact that our work is having. And uh, be sure to, to capture what those metrics are, whether it's page views, or video views, whether that is sharing of the videos uh, so that others can see uh, your end product. Uh, Capture those and use that as a baseline. If you've never done a live ser if you've never done a Facebook Live uh, sermon before, be able to uh, to capture that information, and especially off your first use, use that as a baseline and see how you might be able to uh, to ramp up uh, those metrics moving forward. Uh, this is uh, a functionality that I think that uh, regardless of your church size, uh, if you're uh, regardless if you've never done it before. Uh, it doesn't take long to put a, uh, a live video uh, functionality in play for your church. And uh, on those times where we're at right now, when we're not able to meet on Sundays uh, or on Saturday nights or whenever you as a church um, uh, meets for worship, we can all still have that uh, connectionalism through uh, digital means such as Facebook Live uh, or a live stream component. Um, I'm going to turn or at least have a conversation now with Jessica Vittorio about uh, the copyright and legal uh, ramifications of a live stream service. Uh, and bear with me. Hello, Jessica. How are you? Hey, so, Jessica, if you can just talk a little bit about uh, uh, kind of the need for, uh, or at least what we should be cognizant of from a legal perspective when it comes to streaming services. Yeah, so every streaming service, whether you're using YouTube or um, Facebook, or if you were doing an Instagram live stream for some reason, 
every streaming service is going to have its own set of terms and conditions that govern the rules and limitations of that streaming. All of them, no matter what, I have yet to see one streaming service that does not have an intellectual property component to their terms of use or their uh, terms and conditions. And what that means is when you're on that platform, you are inherently agreeing by using that platform not to infringe upon the intellectual property rights of another party. So what you'll see, especially if you're using Facebook Live, is they have software that when you put a video up there, will scan the video looking for sounds, essentially music, things of that nature. And when they detect those sounds, they will flag that video to ensure that you have the copyrights or the intellectual property rights to be able to utilize those sounds. So if you upload a video, the first thing I want to say is if you upload a video to Facebook from a live stream and it gets flagged, don't panic. Um, generally, there are easy ways to overcome that, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, Facebook does inherently have, so Facebook um, has entered into some copyright agreements with a large number of recording labels related to kind of background music in videos. So sometimes your copyright issues will be addressed through Facebook's own copyright agreements with these labels. The problem with this, and Matt and I were talking about this a little while ago, the problem with this is um, that's not, it's not a good thing to depend on for strategy. So you don't want to make a video hoping that Facebook's secondary copyright agreements will save you in the event that um, you upload something and it's flagged. So be aware of that. What's much more prudent to do is to proactively get those copyrights um, yourself, either from some sort of catalog copyright service like uh, CCLI or CCS or um, uh, One License, there's a whole bunch of them, but um, so you can get a copyright or a catalog license service, meaning you're getting with that license a catalog of artists and songs and content, all sorts of stuff. The alternative to that is you reach out to individual copyright holders and get their written permission to be able to use the content. Um, which is just time consuming, super tedious, can potentially be expensive, and certainly isn't conducive to putting on regular Facebook live streams. So those are your two options in terms of that. If your video were to get flagged, and let's assume the song you're using is not in Facebook's catalog, what they will do is ask you to provide proof of your copyright and you can provide them a copy of your CCLI license, for example, and then that will allow CCLI to go in on the back end. So a little bit of technology, I'm gonna geek out on technology for a second. So when you incorporate a song into a video, Facebook has software that scans that and um, compares the notes and uh, metrics of that song to their catalog of all of the songs that they have and when you do that, they will send a note or it triggers something in their background system. They have a background copyright management software that will allow um, CCLI, for example, to go in and approve the use of that copyright because of that fingerprint of that song. So there's a background communication happening between your user interface of Facebook and what the actual copyright owner has the ability to approve which makes the entire process a lot easier to manage and a lot quicker because they're not having to directly reach out to every single copyright holder to verify that the copyright you've shown them is actually legitimate. So I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, just being able to, I mean, looking at this from a legal perspective of copyright, uh, I do have one question for you. And uh, from a from a licensing perspective, uh, so much, and I think licensing pertains to copyright, and that's the use of music. Uh, can you speak a little bit to the fact that if we only, if our churches only wanted to uh, Facebook Live the actual sermon? Yeah, so the actual sermon itself, as long as it's written by you, 
is your intellectual property. So that's your copyright upon creation, um, or you have some inherent intellectual property rights in that upon creation. So if you're only live streaming the sermon, you really don't need any of these licenses we're talking about. Where you get into the conversation about licenses is if you're going to be incorporating music, if you're going to be incorporating um, certain portions of the book of prayer or things like that, um, or prayer books, if you're going to be utilizing um, portions of some sort of text. So if you're using a study book, for example, if you're doing a Bible study, making sure that you have copyright interests in that book is important. Um, and then anything that may be related to the lyrics of the song. So it's not just the music and the melody itself. It's also the lyrics and those are independent rights. Okay. We have a question from Larry Collins. Can you speak a little bit about the CCLI streaming license? And just uh, of note, uh, from a conference perspective, uh, we provide basic CCLI and one license licenses for uh, our churches. Uh, uh, that there is a separate uh, streaming license that I'm sure Jessica uh, will speak to uh, right now. And we, uh, one license does um, offer a, uh, they're offering through April 15th a gratis uh, streaming license. And we will have resources uh, available on our website on the coronavirus resources page uh, with more information on that. And we are looking uh, into uh, the, uh, we're looking more into uh, the streaming license uh, perspective moving forward. But Jessica, if you can kind of speak to what uh, the CCLI streaming license is and maybe the difference or the need for that. Yeah, so um, there, when you're talking about licenses, whether it's CCLI or any of the other major catalog licenses, like Matt suggested, the first thing to be aware of is that there's multiple levels of licenses. So your basic license, what y'all get from the conference or what you may have purchased as a church, originally will allow you the ability to use those things in worship as you do every Sunday. They do not allow you the ability to stream that content and reproduce and distribute that content, which is why you need an additional license. I have looked at a handful of these licenses over the past 24 hours and I have yet to see one where the streaming is included in the basic license. So I can unequivocally at this point say that if you are looking at your license, you need to make sure you have both the basic license and the additional streaming license. The form that that takes varies by what company you're going through. And some of them will also require you to get a reproduction or production license depending on the manner in which you're planning to facilitate these videos and the differences generally come down to are you going to pre-record them or are you going to live stream them? Um, what sorts of graphics or content are you going to be using in addition to the video? So are you going to be, um, are you going to be putting up the lyrics with it or something along those lines? Are you going to be creating a secondary PDF e-booklet that you're putting the lyrics into? Things like that. So looking into the conjunction of which licenses are most appropriate for the type of video or the type of content that you're looking to produce, but you certainly need to ensure you have both the basic license and the streaming license. So that's step number one. And I will say um, UM put out a good article on this of Ask the UMC, how do we legally worship? And um, it's, a, it's a good article. I've read it. I read it a couple of times yesterday and I do think it's super helpful, especially in walking you through the different types of licenses. So I would certainly suggest that as a resource. I will say it's a little technical, so I find it super helpful and interesting. Um, it may be a little difficult to sift through if you're not familiar with copyright or licensing language. And the other limitation of it is it really only takes you up to the point of um, figuring out which license you need. Once you actually have the licenses that you need, then you get into the question of what are the limitations of that license, and those limitations vary once again by companies. So 
Um, once again, Matt and I were talking about this this morning because I was looking at a couple of them yesterday. Some of them will allow for um, unlimited views. Some of them have limitations on the number of views. So once your video or videos hit a certain number of views, your copyright requires you to take that video down. If you have a big congregation, I think that's especially important because you need to be aware of what those view limitations are. Some of them allow you only to live stream content and then post the video of the live stream and not some of them will not allow you to pre-record videos. So I can't go in on a Wednesday and pre-record a worship service and then upload it on Sunday. So being aware of the differences in recording requirements. And then also um, there are some more nuanced differences. For example, some of them will um, allow the license holder, the or sorry, the company that you're licensing from to elect to put advertisements in your video if you want. Some of them won't. So all of those kind of differences are important. Something else to keep in mind, and this isn't just CCLI related, I'm kind of trying to address it generally because not everyone may be using the CCLI streaming service specifically or their streaming license specifically, but something else to keep in mind, I'm not supposed to touch my face, I'm literally the worst at that. Um, something else to keep in mind is if you're going to be posting your live stream videos to an archive or to the site or wherever it is, most of those licenses would allow you to do that, but only while you have an active license. So if at some point you allow your stream license with that particular company to lapse or you stop paying it or decide not to renew it, those videos then need to be removed because at that point they would be infringing on the copyright because you no longer have the copyrights. So that's kind of a general overview of limitations, um, but all of the websites I've seen be it CCLI, CCLI um, One License, all of them have pretty great user interfaces related to what the limitations on those licenses are. So if you had questions about, you know, how can you stream, who can you stream to, what are the limits, a lot of them have pretty easy to read checklists on their sites if you'll go and look at them. If not, then certainly finding someone who can read the actual license itself and give you the specific limitations to that is always a great option. And viewers, just uh, know too that we will be posting all of uh, the articles referenced in today's video as well as uh, licensing requirements that we have for CCLI and one license onto the resources page on our website. More to come on that. Jessica, one quick question for you. Can you speak to the importance and kind of the nuanced differences on uh, the reporting requirements on uh, the licenses themselves? I know that there are some differences uh, that CCLI and uh, one license have when it comes to the reporting? Yeah, so you want to pay attention to the reporting and what we mean by that is when and how you have to tell um, the company that you're licensing from which songs from their catalog have been used. Some of them will require you to consistently report which songs you're using as you use them. Some of them will require periodic reporting um, and some of them only require it uh, occasionally every six months or so as a grouping of what you've done so when they talk about reporting or they talk about reporting usage for royalty purposes that's what they're talking about you give actually give them a list of the content that you've used and they need that because they're likely paying the musicians or um, the content producers that actually wrote those songs, they're paying them a royalty based on that usage. So they need those metrics so that they can then pay out those royalties. And that'll vary, their reporting requirements vary because they there may be differences in how they're paying royalties out to their content producers. So be very aware of that. And at least, especially if you're not, um, if you're not required to consistently report that usage, then keep a record of it somewhere because what you don't want is to have to go back and watch three months worth of videos to figure out what songs you used when um, in the event that you're only required to report for every six months. Okay. Jessica, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I know that this has been uh, very helpful uh, to our uh, to our viewers today, and we just want to, from a compliance perspective, want to make sure that we are all on the same page with that. So. Uh, there we are again. Viewers, thank you so much for uh, your wonderful questions today. Uh, this video will be posted onto our uh, 
North Texas Conference Facebook page. And please note too, again, that the resources that uh, we discussed on this video, uh, we uh, will post onto our uh, coronavirus resources page uh, that is on our NTC website. Uh, that information has been uh, communicated uh, through a number of our uh, channels before with both clergy and lay audiences, and uh, we will post that link up on our social channels again. Uh, some more questions as they're coming in. Uh, Deanna Lowe, does it make sense if I'm live streaming to a private group rather than our public page. Jessica? No, anytime you're live streaming, you are um, subject to copyright requirements. So whether it's to one other person or to 100,000 other people, you're still subject to the copyright and intellectual property laws. Um, the only difference would be if you happen to be infringing, you're causing a lot more damage with the 100,000. <laughs> okay, so. That is about all that we have to offer today uh, from uh, on this video in terms of best practices. Again, we will have these best practices on our resources page. And please, if you have additional questions, feel free to send a message uh, to us via Facebook or uh, you can email, email them to me, mjacob at ntcumc. Dot org. I will be monitoring that and uh, will definitely answer any questions uh, that can come about. Uh, just uh, Kyle Brown, in answer to your question, uh, Facebook Live for Dummies, uh, I just want to... I, it's very uh, basic to follow, and that'll be listed in uh, kind of a... in the resources page uh, as well. Uh, it, you set up uh, your device uh, on a tripod uh, or the like. Uh, you go to your page. Uh, there is a button that says live video. You press the live video button uh, and start live video and voila, you are posting your content uh, to the web. Uh, Valerie Englert has a question for Jessica uh, about using the Facebook Live scheduler. Jessica, you had talked a little bit about that previously uh, on the ramifications of using scheduler versus just going live. Oh, so you're asking essentially about pre-recorded videos yes. versus live streaming. Um, that varies by license, so you'll need to look at your license for uh, at least one of the services, I believe it's CCLI, but don't hold me to that. Um, you're required to purchase the production license in addition or reproduction license in addition to the streaming license. They won't sell you one without the other. And I don't believe their live streaming license allows you to pre-record videos, but their production license does. So if you had the combination of the two, you're likely good even if you're using scheduler. But I would, once again, revert back to what your license says. Be very aware of two things on that front. One, are you live streaming or pre-recording? And does your license allow for live streaming? And there is a difference between pre-recording a video and uploading it and live streaming and then posting the video of the live stream. The streaming licenses will allow for live streaming and then posting. I haven't seen one that doesn't allow for that. So really the di the distinction we get into is that pre-recording and uploading. If you um, live streamed and then saved the video to be scheduled and posted at a later date, that would likely be covered under the live streaming act as opposed to the pre-recording act. So thinking about the logistics on that. And then something else to keep in mind is... Um, what are you, oh my gosh, I'm, I literally blanked as soon as it started to come out of my mouth. There was something else I was going to say, and I'll remember it as soon as I walk away. I can't remember it right now, but it wasn't necessarily directly related to that. Um, I'll have to think of it and post it later, I guess. Very good. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. We as the uh, North Texas Conference Communications team, uh, this is, I mean, even for us, this is something new. Uh, but we want to be uh, able to provide resources such as this for uh, 
our North Texas Conference churches uh, so that you can be uh, best equipped to be the church that our communities need us to be. Uh, so if you have uh, tips for or recommendations or suggestions for other uh uh, topics of this nature that we as a communications team can offer in the future, please uh, send them my way. My email address again is mjacob, J-A-C-O-B at N-T-C-U-M-C dot org. And uh, we will see what we can do. In the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the work that you uh, in your churches are doing uh, to continue to be the church in this unprecedented time that we all find ourselves in. Uh, Godspeed, and if there is anything else that we can provide, please send me a note. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.